Well, all right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I hope that you can hear me. We are live and in full effect. You already know what today is. This is Keith Lakeen Powell Day, you guys. You're going to be learning a lot about, about movies, about directing, about producing, all type of things. So we're going to play our theme songs, and then we're going to bring our guests right in. So don't go anywhere. Yeah. Look, I said I had a long day. Come on, come roll with a savage. Pour me up a shot. I'm about to roll up this road. Cause I'm gon' be cheap until they close in my casket I smoked a zillion buzz and uh-huh. then I rose from the ashes I had a long day, come on, come roll with a savage Pour me up a shot, I'm about to roll up this roll up this Cause I'm gon' be cheap until they close in my casket I smoked a zillion buzz and then Look. I rose from the ashes look, it started Beans. from the back, I got a zillion cats ahead of me Can't worry about it, wake up every day to be a better me You really scared of me cause I ain't not your chasing felonies I'm dangerous even if the hood the only thing I ever see, like check the pedigree Can't get caught up in your petty beef like you instead of me Rather hate on Kazi than let me like pass a presently Boy, suck suckers what I'd never be like, fuck a talk I ain't gotta tell them, I'ma let them see me Not understanding the matrix, the which they measure me It just don't give a fuck either way I'ma get my cheddar G like move around Lay that rule down, then he better be with hella heat Move from every hook, rapping every street until they bury me All my shit is what I better I'm gon' be cheap until they close in my casket I smoked a zillion buzz and then I rose from the ashes I had a long day, come on, come roll with a savage Pour me up a shot, I'm about to roll up this roll up this Cause I'm gon' be cheap until they close in my casket I smoked a zillion buzz and then I rose from the ashes The Venus, Mr. 12 hours, work the latest shift He straight legit, but make a flip He come across some gravy shit, they hatin' this But that's what haters do, it really made me sick Like find some beer, what you looking at? Why don't you take a pic? That's basic shit. I ain't nothing special, but they favorite ain't taking shit. That's Mr. Who the fuck is you playing with? Like, keep the friend. Take my ass home after I make the chips. My policy, I wasn't even here. And I ain't saying shit. Let's make the grip. Work my overtime. Get my paper thick. My real niggas. Tell them pass the drink. You came to babysit. I'm smoking good. Only day off. He making 80 flip. He supercharged. Super saying shit. My super saying shit. Like, work the shit out of Lewis until he break a quit. And if he ever get out of pocket, well, we just make him piss, I give a fuck Unprepared, lazy, and you can take your pick I should just walk out instead of punching you till I break my fist I had a long day, come on, come roll with a savage Pour me up a shot, I'm about to roll up this roll up this Cause I'm gon' be cheap until they close in my casket I smoked a zillion buzz and then I rose from the ashes I had a long day, come on, come roll with a savage Pour me up a shot, I'm about to roll up this roll up this Cause I'm gon' be cheap until they close No, I'm matter of fact, I'm finna make a home. I'm breaking bones. Nah, I ain't Capone. Just get my paper on. I got a job. Gonna get another job. Gonna get my paper long. And if I have to blaze them too, still gonna be blazing strong. The kids love you, boy, no matter what. I know I ain't alone. I had stoner problems. Visine. Gotta spray cologne. You disagree. Please just hit me out before you say I'm wrong. I'm doing me. Plus, you don't pay the lights and you don't pay the phone. I self improve. Walk my own path and bring your snakes along. Keep blaze one. Sip that douce. Off that straight patron, just tell the truth. Ain't what you wanna hear? Don't even play the song, just play along like you really like it. I won't stay for I long. Said, I had long. a long day, come on, come roll with a savage. Pour me up a shot, I'm about to roll up this roll up this kiss. I'm gonna be cheap until they close in my casket. I smoked a zillion buzz and then I rose from the ashes. I had a long day, come on, come roll with a savage. Pour me up a shot, I'm about to roll up this roll up this kiss. I'm gonna be cheap until they close in my casket.
All right, all right, all right. You all know what time it is. I don't come to you long, but I do come to you strong. And today we have a very, very honored guest, you all. I hope that you're sharing this out in your pages, your groups, and all those good things, because this is going to be very, very informational. It's going to be whew, on the edge of your seats later on. So stay tuned, you guys. And if you don't mind, help me in welcoming our special guest on today. I see one of the actresses coming in, Christina. Peace to you. Thank you so much for tapping in. And you guys, with no further ado, Mr. Keith Lakeen Powell from LEP. How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing good. You know what I'm saying? Christmas Eve, um, enjoying myself with the family. on um, kind of, you know, a movie break. A movie break. Now, I wasn't expecting that. A movie break? Explain that to me. Yeah, you know, take a month off, you know what I'm saying? I still be editing, though, but like in some filming, uh, taking a month or two off. Wow. I know your family really appreciates that, don't they? Yes, they sure do. They say, yo, I ain't, I ain't stressed out no more when I come home. <laughs> you know what? That's a really good thing. I always say balance is a great thing when you balance family as well as business. But I do want to ask you a few questions to begin with. And the very first question is, how did you get into directing movies? Uh, it was really by luck and God, you know what I'm saying? Um... I actually start directing this kind of like wanting to act so bad that the only way to get into something is to create your own. So I had to make my own lane, basically my own route. Oh, so basically you wanted to start off as an actor, but then you said, okay, no, I'm going to, I think I can do this better. Well, I, um, it's basically like I wanted to be an actor just so bad that I knew that in order to really, you know what I'm saying, pursue what I wanted to do and, like, be creative as I get to create things, I said, I got to make my own movie. Because I tried to, you know, audition plenty of times. You know, I got turned down, like, so many times that I was like, uh, I'm not quitting on what I want to do. I want to be an actor. So if it takes me to make a film and make me be to become an actor, I'm going to do that. Wow. That is incredible. Let me ask you this, Mr. Keith. Um, how many awards have you won so far? Um, I have won three best uh, directing uh, awards as a director for my company. Uh, I'm still, you know, chasing that goal to, to win an acting award. You know what I'm saying? Someday. Oh. But you know what? I think that it, it's almost it's almost like your life. You know, you have certain plans, but then all of a sudden it veers off into a whole different direction. Did you think that that your directing would take off the way that it did? Uh, nah, not really, you know, because it was just hard at first just to get one actor, mm. you know, to do a project with me, you know, uh, you know, starting off when you don't have nothing to show for a lot of people. You know, won't like mm. don't like to take a risk on you because you, you don't have nothing to show for. So it was hard to get an actor at first. So I didn't ever think I was going to direct other people in bigger films. I thought I always going to, like, do a bunch of skits with myself and try to get me, like, you know, somewhere in the film business as an actor and maybe an independent film, make a movie or something. But, you know, I just got turned down. So I, I had to go the hard route. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. You know, when, when I ran into you, I still don't remember how I ran into you, but it's just amazing that, you know, watching so many of your movies and coming to life and, you know, watching you edit them and then, uh, you know, when you were promoting them and it's like you're a one man team almost. Does it get overwhelming at times? Oh uh, yeah, it does get, um, overwhelming, uh, sometimes that, uh, you know, uh, to be honest with you, you know, as for directing, you know, a lot of people kind of helped me create, uh, you know, different movies with their, you know, dialogue ideas. They might got something better to say than what I thought of. And they kind of basically, you know what I'm saying, create their own dialogue. And I just kind of tell them the scenarios and they be basically killing it. You know what I'm saying? Wow, so, so you so so you give your you give your actors free reign almost? 
Yeah, I let them improv. You know, I give them the scenario, give them the basics of what we need to do, and they kind of create their own dialogue. I love when my actors be creative with their words, you know what I'm saying? Because it's really hard to kind of, you know what I'm saying? Because like you said, I do do a lot, like for editing, for filming it, and finding music, uh, you know, directing it, orchestrating the whole thing. I do a lot, so I let the actors... Uh, be creative, uh, you know, with that dialogue. So it's like giving them an opportunity to have a chance to create uh, words that make sense with the scenario that I write up. I understand. I understand. Well, here are some more questions. I hope you're ready. <laughs> yeah. All right. How do you feel when people ask you to film their movie? Um. Uh, well, I have, like, you know, moments where, you know, I don't mind filming someone's movie, but, you know, they definitely got to chip in. They definitely got to orchestrate the film of how they want it getting it done, but, you know, got to chip in, like, on the money-wise. They got to, like, you know, because I got to do a lot, you know what I'm saying, when yes. it comes to filming it, adding it. You know, I do the whole nine yards, the artwork, trailers, teasers. You know, I would do the whole nine yards, but it's just, like, you know, I don't feel comfortable telling everybody, like, yeah, 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 because I'm scared they would try to use me. You know what I'm saying? So I really don't like it unless they going to offer, you know, uh, if they going to, like, you know, go by my price for me doing it, basically. Mm, okay, I understand. And, you know, I always say that you have to know your worth. You know, you can't go into a department store and say, well, I'm not going to pay that price. I'm going to pay this price instead. You're not going to get away with that. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes we have to realize what what we're getting into. It's not easy. I can imagine creating movies, making movies, editing, all those things that you said, and then getting nothing in return, no monetary value. That's ridiculous to me. You know, and I really think that that needs to change, you know, because... A lot of times people want a lot of things for free and nothing is free on this planet. So why do we expect people that are putting in so much work to do it for free? That's not that's not fair. And also because you've done so many movies already to date, people should know that you don't come cheap anymore. Correct. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, you're right about that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of, you know, effort I've been to really getting the movie done and, and it's circumstances because, you know, people might want, you know, a certain type of movie where it take more days, where it take uh, more, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And finding different type of music for their type of theme. You know, you don't know what they're going to bring to the table. So I don't know how I can't just set up. One price for, you know, a right. certain film. You got to have different prices because they can bring you any kind of film that they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because as opposed to maybe uh, two days of filming or three days, you might have a project that's a week or two weeks. And you still have to deal with, you know, your actors, your actresses, your uh, MUAs, you know, your, your set designers, all those kind of things. And so that's taking time out of their schedules as well and so you must i i always say know your worth next question what is the distribution process like uh, the distribution process is uh definitely hard it's, it's definitely not easy because it's like you know i don't like to wait on nobody i like to film a movie get it done you know what i'm saying not <laughs> yeah. going out the way but distribution is different you have to actually wait on the you know the qc to basically make sure your movie has quality control and mm. it's not easy because there's so many different circumstances which can create your movie to fail because maybe you don't have the right uh, size, the right format, you know what mm. I'm saying? Uh, you got too much black in your movie, uh, you know what I'm saying? Which is basically, uh, just say like you do a movie and it go from one scene to the next scene mm -hmm. and you got a black like over three seconds, uh, that won't pass. You gotta like one, two, and be black for the screen, be black for one, two, and they gotta get to the movie. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so wow. It's like, and it's so many different things, you know what I'm saying? Not just that, it's a lot. So you just gotta make sure your movie, uh, is definitely, you know, edited right, um, you know, with everything to, to the T. And you can pass QC. 
So basically, did you learn by your mistakes how to get it perfect in order to distribute each each of your movies? Yeah, I basically, you know, when I first tried to distribute a movie, I kind of failed. I failed twice. QC failed me twice. Wow. And it was a sweet kiss, good night. And um, I basically kind of had to learn on my own what to do by just researching. They'll tell you, like, an example of what's wrong with your movie. Like, mm. they'll say, uh, your bit rate is too high. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And you be thinking, like, well, what the hell is that? So you got to go Google, like, all <laughs> these scientific words and learn what that stuff is, and then you can figure out how to fix it. So... Everything is, like, complex when it comes to distributing movies, especially if you ain't with a distributing company. You just distribute your movie to the main source. You know, a lot of people, filmmakers, they with a distribution company mm -hmm. that can distribute their movies to channels. But I'm, I'm connected with the main source where, you know... I send my movies to the main source and they get on channels. I don't, I am not with a, you know, distribution company. I see what you're saying. Now, let me ask you a question about that. Uh, how many channels are your movies on now? Well, you know, uh, some of the movies on like, uh, where, you know, I'm gonna look at it like this. I got, you know, some movies out and a lot of them on three or four channels live. But they also got picked up maybe by six or seven more channels, but it ain't went live yet. So we could say like Hustle Game. Uh, it's actually got picked up by 14 different channels. Oh you goodness. know what I'm saying? Some of them channels is multiverse, so they mean they connected to so many other channels that people got on their TV, smart TV. So it's uh, a lot of channels, but, you know, it's only live on maybe four or five channels. You know what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. How how I'm going to... um. Expound on that a little bit more. How does it get picked up by so many other different channels? And did you know that in the beginning or you just found out after you put the movie out or the movies um, out? Basically, when you send the movie off, um, you know, it's like it's like uh, basically like how a store get an order and order a candy, a bunch of candy, you know what I'm saying? Just candy everywhere, candy everywhere. Okay. And the customer come in and, and picks up a candy, they take it home. So to look at the customer like the channel. The channel is, and your movie is the candy and the, the store is the library. So the customer come up in the library and pick a piece of candy up and leave with it. So that's just like a channel. So mm. it's like, that's how it moves, you know what I'm saying? So you never know, like, how many channels will pick you up. You never know if a channel going to pick you up at all. You just got to have a sales pitch. Mm. When you distribute a movie, you got to create you a sales pitch, and they'll read it, and if they like it, they'll pick it up. It's like you go to the store, to Walmart, and you're looking for a movie, and you pick it up and buy it because you like the title of it, or maybe right. a certain act up in there, you know what I'm saying, you want to see. Mm. That's how they look at it, you know what I'm saying. They go to the store and pick the movie up, and if they want it, they're going to take it home. If they don't, they're going to put it back on the shelf. And, you know, also, I think that visuals play a lot to do with it being picked up. This is just my opinion, because uh, your artwork, it just draws your viewers in. Before you even see the movie, you look at the artwork and go, oh, I got to watch this one. Like, oh, my God, this is crazy. But you know what? I, now, I just I did want to ask you one more question. As far as channels, uh, explain to the people what are channels or give give some examples of channels. Um, channels are like TV, TV, Amazon Prime, Max TV, Netflix, uh, 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 Lifetime Channel. It's so many different ones. HBO, you know, gotcha. there's so many different ones to come on your uh, TV that you can download the app, the TV channel app. Right. And um, you can just get it like that. And it'd be so many on different channels. So some TVs like uh, got certain channels, but some TVs don't got certain channels. But yeah. that's why, you know, when your movie get picked up and distribute, they at least uh, pick your movie up, you know, different channels that have a chance to pick your movie up that maybe not on that TV that you got, but now you got another channel to pick you up, but that channel on the mm. TV, so now you can watch the movie. I get it. That makes a lot of sense, and thank you. Thank you for explaining that. Next question. What is the difference between the director, producer, and film editor? Okay, that's a good question right there. Mm -hmm. uh, the director, uh, I'm going to tell you, even the writer, too. The, the writer, basically, you know, they write the scripts. 
they want they they the one that kind of tells the story. Okay. Now, the director he gonna sit up here and direct the story. You know, make sure all the cast go by their lines, do mm -hmm. what they supposed to do. He gonna direct the story. The producer is basically the one that's like kind of investing in the movie, finding locations, buying props, spending money mm -hmm. towards the movie to get it produced, get it out there. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it takes, buying captions, whatever it takes, uh, buying locations to film. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, making sure the movie. You know, get uh, distributed. They, the producer gonna handle that, and then we got the film editor. The film editor is real important because he is the one, or she is the one that sits at the computer and creates everything that they directed and they produced. Okay, now let me ask you something. So, do you wear multiple hats? Are you a director, producer, a writer as well? Well, I'm all of them. I thought so. I thought so. That's why I said you are always, always busy. And it's so, it's really nice that I actually got you live because I know, you know, even though you're in a break, I know how busy you are editing and so forth. Next question. And thank you for all of that too, because this really helps some of the up and coming, you know, directors, producers, and so forth, especially if they're new in the business. Next question. What does it take to make a successful film? Um, it always, it don't even take money all the time. Sometimes it mm -hmm. takes, uh, the right people at the right time at the right location. Um, and it's just like creating a story that everyone can connect with, that everyone can like, you know what I'm saying, get into, that everyone can actually enjoy, you know what I'm saying? And, and that creates a successful movie, you know, whether it made millions or not, you know what I'm saying? Because... You might not be a celebrity, but you can make a movie that's successful because everybody loves it. You know what I'm saying? They've yes. seen it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and sometimes it ain't really all about the money that makes success because you can gain that money then lose it the next day. You know what I'm saying? It makes a lot so, of sense. Yeah. Go ahead. What makes a, a, a successful movie to me is, is a great cast that everybody got the same chemistry and they perform well and when they create the movie and we got the critics to watch, they love it. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I am going to I am gonna ask you later about some of the actors in your movies and how they got along or didn't get along as well. But how do you market your films? Oh, yeah, we... Uh, we definitely uh got to be creative when when it's time to market your film. You got to do different things. Like, you got to create different trailers, create different posters, uh, even put flyers around your town so to get people on notice and stand by. You got to uh, do behind the scenes, take snapshots of the pictures. I mean, the pictures from the movie and... um. It's different ways when you when you and when you just say you are using a couple of snapshots from the movie, you'll create a significant, you know, phrase with what's going on in the movie or something that catch somebody attention. You gotta have a great phrase, you know what I'm saying, along with your snapshots or if you're doing behind the scenes, you gotta have a phrase of in you know what I'm saying, your yes. post which can, you know, bring in the crowd and get them, you know, there, draw their attention in. You know, one thing I do uh, admire about you is that you always give uh, trailers of your films, you know, and so a lot of times we'll see trailers and, and like I'll be waiting, you know, like, OK, when is it coming out? When is it coming out? OK, OK. Is it out yet? Is it out yet? And I know I drive you crazy with the same questions all the time, but it's like it's like it's like you build up to a crescendo and then bam, it drops and like. Everyone, let me ask you something on on that as well. As far as marketing, um, do you have viewers from different countries? Oh yes, yes. Mm, and what do they say about uh, about the films, and where are they from? Um, the viewers. Um, I had viewers since I was on YouTube. Um, I used to uh, make a lot of YouTube movies. Mm -hmm. They'd be saying any and everything, and I can't keep up with where they're from because <laughs> they'd be having. You know, there's a lot of different names they have. That, you know, yeah. yeah. I just don't. You know, I don't know it. I can't pronounce it. You know what I'm saying? But I always <laughs> agree them back, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I always speak to them back. But it'd be different ones. Ever since my, you know, early YouTube days, like my second. Yeah, I had a whole bunch of, you know, foreigners, 
you know, people that's not from USA, they'll hit me up and, you know, say, great job, man, you know. And some of them will speak a language that I don't even understand. And <laughs> they probably saying something good, so I'm going to give them a heart for it. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I had to learn a few languages and a few phrases, you know, just to, you know, let them know that, okay, I do appreciate what you're saying. I had to look it up, but, you know, I had to do my translator, but I thank you. And I usually try to do it in their language. Okay, next up, in 2024, what type of changes do you have to make um, your films even better? Um, smaller cast in different movies. Uh, I talk to them more about the film. You know, you know, you uh, you basically connect with them a little bit more. You know, dive in deep with them a little bit more. You know, what I'm saying talk to them more on the phone because, like you said, uh, you know, table reads. I feel like that's a waste of time because really, when you do table reads and be so many people on there at one time that. Somebody gonna not pay attention. So you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I like to talk to my actors individually, you know, the people that's gonna perform within my movie, I like to talk to them individually, you know what I'm saying? To give them that director actor time, you know what I'm saying, where we kinda connecting and they understanding what they need to be like, what they need to wear, where they need to be at, what time they need to be there. Mm -hmm. So I connect with them on a personal level, you know, to get them into the movie more than they even thought they'll even be in the movie. So I'm saying as opposed to having Having a larger, you know, uh, a larger staff or whatever, if, if you make it a little bit smaller, it's more personalized, correct? Yes, yes, yes. I got yes, you. Yes. Let's talk about the editing processes and the ups and downs of getting the film edited to the best extent. Uh, the editing process is definitely not simple because uh, you got to take your time with it. Uh, you got to really watch what you're doing. You got to uh, focus. You got to find music. Uh, you got to make the right cuts. You got to uh, really observe. That's when you actually get to sit down and put in that, that labor work of just trying to get it the best it can be. You know what I'm saying? Because accidents and mistakes does happen on the film. You know, sometimes, you know, we can't get everything we want to get in the movie, yes. so we got to rearrange things in the production of the movie. Like when I'm sitting there editing, I got to, you know what I'm saying, maybe crop and zoom a little bit because maybe some was in the background that won't supposed to be in the background, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's certain things you got to do to tweak it, so the editing process is where you really sit down and focus mm. more than ever. Let me ask you something on that note as well about the um, editing and so forth. Um, have you found really great music for uh, your films and are you still looking for more? Yeah, I um, found real great music. Um, some of them came from you. You introduced me to a couple of great <laughs> artists. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh, I definitely, you know, was honored to have their music uh, up in the movie. Uh, and um, I use a couple of uh, websites mm -hmm. uh, which, which I pay for, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. copy, copper, uh, copy right. uh, writing free music, which I pay for mm -hmm. to be able to get it. And, um, well, you know, definitely come to when you need, like, sound effects, instrumentals. Yeah. You need uh, the movie-type music, you know what I'm saying? Some hero action, crime-type mm -hmm. music, you know what I'm saying? So I have to go to that program to get what I get because I make a lot of thrillers more than anything. Mm, yes, you do. Yes, you do. And, you know, we did a competition uh, to find great music. And I know we did uh, Janeta Marie. Uh, she won for one of your films as well as New Gang City. So shout out to them as well. They are all doing excellent. And we've got thousands more. They're waiting at the door so they can get onto a Keith LaKeen Powell movie. Let's keep going, shall we? Uh, let's see. Name people in the entertainment business that you will never work with again oh boy <laughs> oh man it's uh uh that's a loaded question uh, <laughs> it's, it's different uh you know uh people you know what i'm saying that you know what i'm saying you know they got their secret agenda you know what i'm saying mm. um Hmm. Uh, them one of them questions where I ain't gonna, you know, name a name. Right. It's just like, it's, it's, it's just people, you know, I can't get, it's just, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right, so are are they actors? Are they uh, other producers or writers or? 
Um, they some actors and um, you know, other filmmakers as well. So you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Uh, they, you know, it just, it just, you know, when people kind of, you, I'm gonna tell you like this: when you kind of, uh, you know, you put people in movies and, um, you know, I don't want to give them no clout, so that's why I can right, say no names. But right. when you when you put people in movies and you know what I'm saying, you look out for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They still feel like they owe something, and I don't want to put you in the movie. They feel like you know, <laughs> uh, I done something for. Uh, they feel like they done something for me. When really, I done something for you. You so say I, you say endless promotion <laughs> for free. You know, you know, people tend to flip on you, and then they they look at you like, man, that's like, man, he ain't even hit me up no more, man. Cause mm. it's just because you know, you know, you you flip on me. And some people there make posts about me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, 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 I'm going to go and say one guy, man, uh, I ain't going to really call his name out to get no clout, but the guy that made the first Paul Pry, he kind of, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He, he kind of done some switching up moves like he had made a post about me. After I thought I gave him basically a lead role in the movie. Wow. So, you know, uh, different ones that do that, and it's a couple. It's like three or four that done that before. You give them a nice role in the movie, they turn on you fast as hell. Well, you know what? That that happens in almost every industry. You know, you have good intentions. You try to help people. And then in the end, you look up and go, whoa, are you serious? You did you did me like this? But you just have to keep it moving. You learn from your mistakes. But now this is a tricky one as well. What type of behind the scenes drama has occurred while in the process of shooting your movies? Man, it's almost drama on there. I ain't going to give nobody no clout on the drama, but you know what I'm saying? It's people that do get mad at each other. I mean, you know, uh, it's more women than men that get mad at each other. I had more uh, kind of women beef than men beef. You know what I'm saying? I do. And how do you deal with that and continue to have a successful movie set? I don't take sides, you know what I'm saying? And, um, I'll, and one thing I don't do, take sides, because we are our own person. And um, and uh, if that person has done you wrong, I really don't have nothing to do with that because that's kind of between y'all two and I don't want to take sides. That's, out, that's kind of personal. That's outside the business. You know what I'm saying? I do. I do. Yeah. I, I, I definitely yeah. understand that. One of it, we all get together. We make the film now. What happens outside of the, mm. you know, the business with a, you know, back and forth with anybody, yeah. you know, it's happened for different people, man, through time. Like you said, even when I first started, you know what I'm saying? 2018, you know, I, you know, people just kind of didn't get along. Maybe somebody ain't see out of high and mm. old people. Most of them, when all of them, the one thing about it is when they all come to the set, they never show that. It's always <laughs> before. The movie, no, not before the movie, but like before we, after the talk about the movie and we do it and then like, you know, after the movie, things kind of, you know, crumble. You know what I'm saying? I do. I do. Let me ask you one question. Have you ever had to remove someone from the set? No, I ain't never had to move, remove now, nobody from the set. Uh, <laughs> everybody, everybody, you know, a come to realization, you know what I'm saying? Right. It never got so bad where, you know, people really got into it, you know, like that on the set. Because really, when they come on the set, it's more like everybody are trying to keep quiet from each other. You know what I'm saying? They don't like each other. They ain't gonna into each other. They just doing their thing and they in and out. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I believe, yeah. I believe that's a good idea too because you never know who's watching, um, how word gets around and you may block your next blessing by how you deal with others on sets. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask yeah, you another... I, yeah. I did have an incident one time where, uh, you know... It, and some people that I won't work with no more. But I was on the set, you know. Somebody had brought a gun to the set and left it on the set. And oh then some, some people had blamed me for, well, why would I pay for a cabin for us to film in and then leave a gun on the set? Oh you know what I'm saying? God. Yeah. Well, you know, I already told everybody, like, you know, we don't bring our 
our weapons to the sack. You know, I always tell her, since day one, I saw a film, hey, don't bring no gun, man, don't bring that gun on the sack. You know, <laughs> right. I always got prop guns. And everybody knew me. I always got a trunk full of prop guns. I got the prop guns. So, you know, we was making a movie called Something in Virginia. You know, a couple actors in that project that I won't work with ever again. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody had left a gun on the set, and then some of the actors thought, I done it. Some of the actors thought other people had done it. Some of the actors accused other people had done it. You know what I'm saying? It was a chaos. But the thing about it, we still got it. The movie done day one and day two. But it's just that's the drama behind the scenes that people was pinpointing people out. Now, I ain't going to say everybody blamed me. Everybody started blaming each other. Different mm-hmm. people started thinking, like, oh, maybe that person done it. But, you know, a couple, few was like, oh, maybe Keith done it. Because wow. either one, this is movie. And, you know, like, people like that, I can't work with no more because who would spend money on a cabinet to sabotage their own movie? Come on now. Right. I do understand that. And, and it's, it's horrible when things like that happen, but you still got it done. And that was really an extremely great movie. That was one of my favorites, as a matter of fact. Next question. Who inspired you to become a filmmaker? Well, my uncle, because he basically used to come down and record all our family reunions when I was small. And when I seen him with that camera, and I used to watch TV and stuff like that, I'm like, man, yo, all I got to do is get a camera like him. Wow, that is so neat. Like from one, from a few experiences from a family member, look where it ended or where it's going. I know he's very proud of you, correct? Yeah, he passed away a couple of years back. His name is Joe Lewis. Oh. Um, he passed away about six or seven years back. And, um, you know, that right there inspired me when mm. I, when I used to be at the firm and used, I used to come there. We used to do it at the summer of the state park. Well, you know, he'd come out there and bring a video camera. I, I used to be amazed by it because he would make cassette tapes and give it to my grandma. And at the time, I was staying with my grandma, you know, a whole lot, you know, because my mom was working and my daddy was working. So mm-hmm. I stayed with my grandma a whole lot. And um, I used to got to see myself on TV back then at seven years old on a cassette tape. Wow. That is so amazing. And I know he is looking down. He's probably on every set trying to direct in spirit. Okay. But I'm sure he is very, very proud in heaven. Okay. Next question. Name your favorite LEP top 10 actors. And what does LEP mean? Uh, LEP is Lakeen Entertainment Productions. Uh, the meaning of it is basically giving new actors a chance to perform where they don't have to do a lot of, you know, extra work when it's just the basic was basically, you know, it's a learning experience with LEP. They kind of teach you, give you the experience to be on TV, put you in the predicament that you want to be in to make you evolve into a better actor, you know, can also get you selected into a bigger film, make a film, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, um, it's just, you know, a beginning for all the new people that really want to do this and never had a chance. I get you. I know it's going to be hard to narrow down your top 10 actors, but try to do it for us. Let us know who are your top 10 actors. Uh, all of my top 10 actors. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, um, it's hard to really narrow it down. But I can tell you, like, 10 dependable actors off top. Like, they real dependable. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they true to their word. But it's a, it's a lot more than 10 of them. It's like 30 of them, be for real. No lies. 30 some of them is, like, real wow. dependable. But I can name you, like, 10 that been dependable. You know, this year, they've been out there a lot. You know what I'm saying? Kind of definitely almost every movie type. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm... Um, I can start with uh, Jerome Mellie, 70 years old. He don't want to miss a movie to save his soul. <laughs> he don't even want to be up in there. He just want to be there with the people and talk to them and have fun and experience life, you know, like he always wanted to do, maybe in his younger days. He, he <laughs> tried to be there all the time. You know what I'm saying? 70 um, years old. Wow. Amazing. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to say Lee Buckle, you know, mm-hmm. he real dependable. Lee Buckle been with me for a couple of years. He kind of longer, been in the game with me longer than a lot of LEP people. So, mm-hmm. uh, he, you know, he real dependable, you know what I'm saying? Um, and he 
he'll, he'll let you know if he can make it. He ain't gonna, you know, play around or nothing like that. So, you know, I, I, I definitely want to give his name a shout out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and how many I got a name? A ten. That's two. <laughs> oh, I don't that somebody mad right now because I ain't said the name. Like, damn, keep being my name. Okay, you know they will. <laughs> This is not on me, you guys. This is on Keep if you Looking. Don't my name tonight, don't ever call me again. <laughs> don't ever call me again. Ooh, you are on the hot seat, and I'm loving it. Go ahead. But, um, okay, uh, uh, it, it's a lot of people that came, you know, out with me this year. You know, it was real incredible. You know what I'm saying? And it's a couple of people that been with me a couple of years. It's real incredible. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like you said, you got Jerome and Lee. Uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to get uh, Patrick uh, Green. I like him too because uh, Patrick Green, he got his own camera. He got his own equipment. Mm. He'll come out and help anytime. You know, he actually played my replacement for Paul Pry. Wow. Cause the first guy, you know, didn't do right. So he, he the first guy acted good now. I ain't going to give him no doubt. <laughs> on that he acted good but out of you know out of the outside the movie you know somebody i can't really rock with again so i'm saying right um but patrick came in it was the next paul pry and you know he bring his own camera got his own equipment he know how to edit movies wow. uh he's a great asset to the team you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. i'm definitely gonna say his name mm-hmm. um another guy came out this year with me and started working with me real hard and his name is c mark jones mm-hmm. Um, he been uh, you know, grinding, holding that camera, doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Helping me get the production. He has spent money. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to certain things, so you know he can make his character look good and make the people in the movie look good. He'll help out like different ways. You know what I'm saying? And he's funny too. Um, I I remember yeah. him. Go ahead. <laughs> um, there's a lot of them to tell you. Too, yes, man. there is. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, let me name some girls. Please. Okay. I'm gonna name. I'm gonna name two girls and one. Okay. Okay. I like uh Tamika and um Shavon Howerton. I like them too, mm-hmm. man. Um, because like you said, uh, they they down to do they down to like do anything in the movie. You know what I'm saying? They're yes. on the ground, cross, do different scenes. It's hard for other people to do. So you know I'm saying, yeah. So you yeah. know, um, and they dependable too. Like they'll show up and they'll tell you, like, look, Keith. That day ain't a good day for me. Let me catch the next party. I'm like, you know, that's good. We'll get you on the next one. Then. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. So that's real good. Um, Christina Monique with Marshall, she was new this year to me, and she done excellent for me this year. She's Very in the chat. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. You know, she's a woman of a word. You know, she'll keep everything solid. You know what I'm saying? And come on, perform good. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I can't oh. wait to watch Snatched because Christina is in that one too, correct? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I cannot and I wait. Got, um, I got to mention these two guys the same as one too because mm-hmm. they've been with me kind of the longest. they twin brothers. They don't do a lot of acting. They do somewhat acting, but they will help on the set. They'll chip in. Mm-hmm. They'll look out for anything I need. And that's Nathaniel Roberts and Antonio Roberts. They, twi- they, they ain't twin brothers, but, you know, they brothers that's born the same year. year oh, almost. wow. You know what I mean? Right, right. I got you. <coughs> They might be twin brothers. I really don't know because you know I want to dive in deep and like, hey, Nathaniel, as you and that's on, as y'all twin brothers, you know you don't want to dive in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you know, I don't want to be like in that business, but I know they brothers. I know they cool. They like brothers to me. You know what I'm saying? They mm-hmm. they've been with me for four years, working. You know, in different LAP films and always there for me. And you know, also a lot of L oh, and Christina says, I appreciate you, fam. I appreciate the opportunities. A lot of your actors, uh, they are into more than just acting. Some of them are actually uh, into music as well. That really yeah, shocked and, me. And one of them is Jude Dad. That's another guy I got to mm-hmm. mention because, you know, he do great behind the scenes. He got his own music uh, to be popping. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes. And, you know, he's very helpful too. You know, he'll, and he'll get down and dirty too and be that character. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I was watching him play basketball. He is an exceptional basketball player as well. It's like, it's like you're bringing out the best out of all of your actors and actresses. 
this and I love that, you know, such as uh, Karina, Karina Beltre. Um, and she does uh, makeup as well. So, and she's also a model, plus she's an actress. It's like, wow, you guys are really killing the game. Like everything that you need, you have it's in your arsenal. And I love that. Okay, I just want to. Karina and PJ too, because they definitely up there on the list as well. PJ, uh, yes, he is they, hilarious. Like said, they they help promote the movie. You know what I'm saying? They yes. uh come out and, and like you said, no lie. I think Karina is my best dressed female actress ever. I ain't just saying I do too. To, yeah. You know what I'm saying? To try to make nobody else mad, but everybody dressed good. I'm talking about like she's a model. Like yes. she be wearing these model bag clothes. Like yes, she like, does. Oh my god, and you know. Like, Yes. Everybody was good. Don't get me wrong. Right. Man. And just like she, you know, is a whole nother level with the yes. like she looked like a, a real, like a celebrity model type. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like, indeed. The way she dressed, you know what I'm saying? The way she dressed in these movies. And you know, um, I interviewed PJ a couple of years ago. It was hilarious. And then I, I interviewed uh Karina as well. She's going to be um Actually, in one of her own, well, in our magazine, but she's going to be on the cover, and that's going to deal with a lot of models and so on and so forth. So that's, you already know, that's going to be a beautiful issue. But let me ask you a few more questions. What was your favorite, and don't worry, you guys, if he did not mention your name, okay, you know that you are his favorite, all right? But what was your favorite LEP film or cast to work with or work on? Uh, my favorite one, um, uh, to be honest with you, I did like, uh, I liked it, uh, I liked the Ghost Fiend and something in Virginia. Ghost Fiend, because mm. that was the first time I had, um, uh, my, my good quality camera, and wow. it, it was a small, tight cast, and, um, like, we killed it because we actually got blessed, you know, Lord put us in a predicament where we had, like, a great location, and I like something Virginia because I've always been kind of like a, 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 a kid, Red Riding Hood fan. Yeah, you know I loved, I loved it. Oh, my God, just the whole vibe of the movie. It brought me back to my childhood. You're absolutely right. Who played um, Red Riding Hood in that movie? Oh, that was Karen Edwards in there. Karen Edwards, she the lady, you know what I'm saying, that's fabulous. Like, when yeah. she stepped on the set, you feel like you're around a star, you know what I'm saying? You, Oh, my God, you do. And I've been watching her progression, and she's in more and more films. Like, every time I look up, she's in different films, not just yours, but she's she's getting so many opportunities now, and that is that's a beautiful thing to see. But I, will, I do want to ask about Money Calling. Uh, tell us about Money Calling, the movie series, which is your biggest project. Uh, the storyline, characters, release date, and the ups and downs. That's a loaded question, but go ahead. Money Calling, um, it's actually three movies. Uh, we made each of them an hour long a piece. Uh -huh. And I call it a uh, movie series because it's basically a series of movies which is a continuous story and you're going you know, to keep you on the edge of the seat wondering what's going to happen next. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, actually decided, I said, look, let me go ahead and get Jerome Metley and Lero because he had told me, man, I think I'm too old to act. I don't think I'm too old to do this. And I said, nah, man, we're going to get you to be the star of the movie, but I'm going to turn you into the bad guy. So I got to working with Jerome <laughs> And next thing you know, he had brought it out, man. He was Mr. King. And oh um, the cast, man, you know, he got two daughters in this movie. Oh, wow. And it's played by Tamika Diggs and Nikki Royal. And they brought it in this movie. That's all I can say. You know what? I, I, I've been seeing the trailers. Oh, my God. Like, I couldn't believe that that was Mr. Medley. I'm like, wait a minute. He's playing What? He's not. Oh my God! Like it. It's just so amazing to see what you bring out of your cast. You know what I'm saying? But what is the release date on Money Calling, uh, the movie series? Uh, it's definitely a 2024 release date. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm looking, hoping to get it out sometime, maybe in a J. Maybe I say maybe between end of January and the beginning of March, somewhere around that time. It's going to be released, and um, like you said, the, the dates, they be kind of, you know, suspenseful right. even to me. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. The channel, you know, definitely will let you know, but pick it up. But they are kind of surprised. They like to surprise you now. You know? Wow. I, like I, I, I couldn't do it because my my nerves would be on edge. Like waiting, waiting. Like oh my god, it's out, it's out. Oh my god. Actually, um, money calling. One, I just distribute that one, so, you know, that one, um, you know, in the midst of coming out, like you said, probably the end of January, but through March, the beginning of March, so that willing to drop anytime, Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You you know, as soon as it drops, let us know, because this one is going to be incredible. But tell me uh, about a few ups and downs when you were uh, filming Money Calling. Uh, money calling was a journey because it was kind of hard to like try to get all your cast members back on the set on the same day. So mm. I had to break the story down a little bit. I had to, you know, um, I try to get all my LEP people in there I can for money calling. So I broke everybody up into different dates and I worked with this group. I kept Jerome in a whole lot because he was our main star of the movie. Mm -hmm. And his two daughters was our biggest supporting cast, including me. And we had another supporting cast, which is Jude Dabbs. He was mm -hmm. like, i say the arch enemy of the King's family because he had kind of done a crime towards them. You know what I'm saying? Wait, wait, wait. And so, there. wait, wait. I got to ask you. So, Jude Dobbs is, how? how is he related to Jerome? Because th this is, sends a, a new twist to the film because they're related, but they're playing opposite ends. So how are they related? Um, Actually, in this one, they, they got related at all. Uh, Judas actually friends with uh, Mr. King's son. Mm. And Mr. King's son basically uh, uh, tells him to rob his father because he done robbed his father and got caught. So he wanted to rob his father again oh but get God. a street guy to do it and Judas was a street guy that done it for his friends so you know the story get real dramatic after that Oh my God, you know what? The suspense is killing me. And I tell you this, every film that you drop, I'm like, okay, don't, don't, don't do this to me. Hurry it up, hurry it up. But then now I realize, you know, you have to, you have to wait until it's distributed. I get it now. Let me ask yeah. you uh, a few more questions because I know I don't want to keep you too long. It's Christmas Eve. Everybody is enjoying themselves. Family is over, but Tell me who has been a major help or push when it comes to promotion and marketing and getting the views and explain to me how could how could it get better and what will what will you need to be done? Okay, uh well you one of the ones to help us get a push because you know, uh you help promote us, you share things, you get people involved, you let people know. Um it's all the different programs out there that do it too. Like when I get in the news media, yeah. uh, when I get in articles, and I got to say another guy uh, that's out in California is named Marcus Bumpus. Yes. You know, he kind of helped push a little bit too with, you know, he, he got a publicist, which is basically publishing the title in each of these storylines talking about him. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, He's big time. He is out, big time. And, um, yeah. He put the movie out as well. So it's kind of a little push to help us, you know, get seen in all these big time articles, New York, LA. And then we got different actors. They promote as well too, uh, to push. But I change this. We, I got to create a marketing team. I got which you. I, I'm going to try to see can I find a group of people, some of the actors mm -hmm. to be part of my marketing team and help push the movie, help me market you know what I'm saying? The right. film, so we can grow. And you know, I always say you have to have a, a circle, an inner circle. You know what I'm saying? That they can call on you, you can call on them, but you know you're going all in the same direction with the same purpose. And I have my inner core and I thank them. They've been with me for quite some time in the music industry as well as in promotions and some of them are from different countries so that is so incredible for us to be, to have been blessed that way but now I gotta ask you who this one this one threw me for a loop all right um there was someone that was in the newspapers uh a couple of months ago maybe last month something happened with this person and he went on the run, allegedly. 
And he was also a part of one of your movies. Can you explain to me about this person and how did they come to be on your movie set? Innocent, right, you're innocent until proven guilty. Right, yeah, yeah. I get that. Let me ask you something. Um, the news report said that he went on the run. And was did he film with you after the alleged, you know, murder? Yeah, actually, I think it was. Uh, wow. They said, uh, um, you know... Uh, the murder happened in July, and we filmed in August, so... Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I guess he was on the run during that time frame. Yeah, uh, so... And when... Uh, he, like do you said, remember when he was apprehended, and where? Um, well, one of the fellow actors had alarmed me that, uh, one of the cast members, uh, got arrested, uh, and it was on news and stuff, so I had watched it. And they said, I think it was in Lynchburg. Uh, I'm not too sure, but it was, I think it was, I don't know. Mm, so, so the alleged murder, we're not going to say it was, the alleged murder happened in one city. Then he came to your set. Um, how did he end up? Did you know him to begin with? Or was he, you know, uh, introduced by someone else? Um. Uh, uh, I ain't know him. I ain't know him. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually knew his friend that he came with on the set. See, um, uh, mm -hmm. he, he really, it actually was an accident that he was in the movie, to tell you the truth, because what had happened was, uh, I, uh, one of the other guys, which is his friend, had auditioned for the movie role, and, you know, he passed the audition, so, uh, mm -hmm. a couple of days before we shot, he asked me that I need any extras, so mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, you can bring, you know, somebody if you want to, you know, a friend. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and then, um, you know, he had, uh, brought that guy, but one of the other main actors that's supposed to have been out there that day mm -hmm. didn't show up. So I, I took that guy that was accused for something and, and replaced him. He, he kind of played in the movie all day that day. Oh my so, God. And uh, so there, there, was, there was nothing that tipped you off. He was just a normal actor. Um, he came to the set very respectful. And then you find out months later that he was, oh my God. I can't even imagine. Oh, my God. How, how did that make you feel after you found that out? Um, you know, I was shocked. I, yeah. I didn't think, I didn't think he had, you know, I didn't, I don't think, you know, he could have done it. I don't, you know, I, okay. he didn't seem like a guy that would do all that because he's kind of quiet on say, You know, he like to li listen to, you know, most of the people that do that, you'd be thinking they kind of out loud, outrageous, wild and out, won't listen to nobody, what they say, going to do what they do, hardcore, but he was more like a, uh, you know, kind of like a normal guy, laid back, he, you know, he looked around a whole lot, like somebody was after him, but I didn't think, you know what I'm saying, it won't nothing like that, you know? And you know what's crazy? It's like you never know who's on your set. You know, even though they're actors, you just never know sometimes. What what lesson has that taught you? Yeah, that taught me, you know what I'm saying? I got to basically uh, tell the cast, basically come along, unless I know that person they coming with them. You know what I'm saying? I done checked mm -hmm. them out. Mm -hmm. um, 
Um, for the new actors, they got to go through a, a, a even harder audition, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. to get in the movie now. You know, that just tighten up the stipulations when it comes to, you know, getting into, you know, one of our films because, you know, we never know what somebody could have done or uh, if they did do it, if they didn't. We never know what nobody done a couple hours before they came to the movie set. Exactly. And you never know. So at least you learned and nothing happened, you know, on set. That is a good thing. Thank God. Thank God. But you know what? I mean, like I said, unfortunately, sometimes you have to learn the hard way. But I think that God has your cast covered. No matter who it is, where you are, you're covered. And that is a beautiful thing. Let me ask you something. Is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to at this time? I'd like to give a shout out to... Oh, uh, well, I'd like to give a shout out to God first and yes. thank you for letting us all wake up and see this joyful day. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Hopefully we can wake up and see tomorrow too. And I'd like to give a shout out to all the LEP cast members. I'd like to give a shout out to the supporters, the fans, um, and so many different names. I can't name them all. I don't want to exclude nobody by not <laughs> saying their name, but you know, it's all of them that, you know, they really dare support. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And if anyone is trying to reach you, if they're interested in being in one of your movies or if they're interested in sending you music, how would they be able to go about doing that? Um, I got to figure out the new stipulations first and, okay. and they're going to kind of be released early 2024, you know, when it comes to new actors, mm-hmm. uh, new music, you know, me and you going to get together and talk about things about that. Of course. Uh, but you know we'll handle that you know what I'm saying and yes. as far as the new actors it's just some stipulations I gotta rearrange and think about how I'm gonna work the process out before I you know invite new people come but at least the people that been in movies before they still got a chance to continue to be in movies I got you I got you well I thank you so very much for coming through this has been really an excellent outstanding interview as always but also I do want to tell all of our viewers and all of our listeners be looking out for the Keith Lacane Powell magazine you guys that will be coming out next month we are finishing editing as we speak you'll be able to purchase the online magazine as well as the hard copy magazine so be looking out for those links please come out and support this young brother and we are expecting many many great things in the future and we'll be of course dropping all of his links every wear for you all to see some of his movies as well. So I just want to say thank you so much for coming through Mr. Keith Lacane Powell. Is there anything else you'd like to say? It was an honor to be on the show once more and I'm, I'm, I'm highly thankful you know, to be a part of this and I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a, and a, and a Happy New Year and let's stay safe out here. All right. Thank you so much, my brother. And we're going to go out with one of your actors as well. He does great music. His name is Jude Dobbs. And this is called, of course, Shut It Down, you all. I 
stop it, you making my heart be go crazy. If I'm that little nigga, I'm with the business, ain't no nigga taking my baby. Ride with the glass in the car, yeah. Living like you ain't no tomorrow, yeah. Young nigga going too hard, yeah. Send that little boy to the stars, yeah. Tell me who you loving now, who you loving Tell me who you riding around with, know I'm here to shut it down. Tell me that I'm back in town, yeah. Go ahead and tell me.